this is the Logitech M720. This is the mouse I used to use. That is, until I've recently become curious about a different mouse. Enter the Logitech MX Master 3. Let's unbox this and uh, see if maybe this mouse is right for you, if it's right for me, and if it can replace my M720. Let's get into it. So currently, these are the things that sit on my desk that I use to type at and to do other various editing things and click around. I typically use this when this is wants to disconnect a couple times, but it's once in a blue moon. I also use my trackpad to be able to zoom in and zoom out and move left and right through my timeline. And this is just the Logitech Craft Bluetooth keyboard. I want to see if the MX Master can replace both of these. So let's unbox this and test it out. So for starters, there are two different versions of this mouse. There's this one, which connects to Mac and Windows. And then there's one that's specifically Mac only and that one and only that one. Don't quote me, this is just according to the chart on Logitech's website that works with iPad OS. Not this one, the other one that's specifically labeled as for Mac. I kind of have already opened this earlier today. I haven't done anything with it so that way I can do everything for the first time. But I was excited about this. So in the box you have a MX Logitech label. You open that up and behold, you have your mouse. Now I will say this, like the way it feels in my hand, like it's kind of comfortable. It's definitely very different than how this feels. This has like a tiny bit of rotational feel in it and there's obviously gonna be more functionality than this, but I like this because I have three different things to be able to connect this mouse to. Um, I have the click to free scroll and it connects over Bluetooth. And when I switched to a MacBook without any USB ports, this became very handy. Obviously this is also Bluetooth and also comes with that universal nib. So we got that. And then we also have our paperwork and cables or cable of the USB-C variety, which is great, as well as your basic setup instructions and junk. Now I think it's time that we go set this up and test it out and see if it's really worth the upgrade over getting something that's admittedly a tiny bit pricey, but definitely less pricey than this mouse. This is like 60 bucks ish or less last I checked and this is roughly a hundred bucks. So is this worth the $40 more depending on your use case? So uh, let's go uh, test this out. All right. So we have the mouse all set up and all you had to do is basically on the sticker beneath it, it tells you to go to mxsetup.logi.com and we have that pulled up right here. Basically, it guides you through the whole setup process so you can be like, yes, help me set this up. I'm setting up a mouse. I want to set it up over Bluetooth or maybe you're not feeling confident about Bluetooth and you'd rather use the USB receiver. By the way, uh, that's one small gripe I already have already, but I've had this gripe with the Logitech Craft keyboard. With the M720, you have a way to store that USB dongle underneath the mouse like most wireless mouse mice do. And the MX Master, there is no way of setting that up, but then again, in order to even use USB specifically on a Mac, in my case, you need a dongle. And they have yet to make USB-C versions of this, or Thunderbolt versions of this, I should say. So, there's that. But I barely use this anymore, so it, I kind of don't care. But we're moving on. I'm going to choose Bluetooth, and then it basically just guides you through the steps. Make sure your mouse is on, and then your light will blink underneath this area right here, but it's not wanting to focus. And basically it's telling you to go into your Bluetooth settings and wait for it to connect. 
and go about it that way. And if you don't already have Logitech options installed, then they prompt you to do so. Then when you have it installed, you'll hit add devices, add Bluetooth device. You'll find your device, which will say not connected. You'll want to connect it. And then eventually it will show up in your Logitech options browser and it will have to download some drivers. It will also give you options for what application support you want it. So, and by that, I mean like what applications you want to use with it. So like Photoshop, Premiere, Final Cut, Chrome, Microsoft, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and you can even add other applications if you want. And of course, you can fine tune your mouse, you can adjust your pointer speed, your scrolling speed, etc. You can en enable Logitech Flow, which basically allows you to use this mouse between Mac and Windows simultaneously, which is also a feature supported by this mouse as well, just so you know. Now I'm going to open up the couple programs that I think benefit the most from this mouse specifically, and that is Premiere and Final Cut. For me, I actually use Premiere for editing my videos at the moment. I used to use Final Cut once upon a time, and then I tried to get into video as my job. Kind of still am. Um, <laughs> and pretty much everywhere is like, we only want people who use Premiere. So I started learning Premiere and now I pretty much use it all the time, but I did use Final Cut and have never had a problem with it. But I currently use it to edit audio sermons because I know nothing about an actual audio editor. So here I have a sermon from my church. What I'm hoping works well for me with this mouse for editing video and audio, and what I'm showing you for Final Cut will also work in Premiere is the MX Master has this little side wheel and I can move my timeline left and right by moving this wheel up and down and it just sits in a nice place right where my thumb rests anyway. I can move through my timeline like that or if I press down on the scroll wheel, I can move my mouse to the right and to the left and move through my timeline that way and I love it. So I think that will help me speed up my editing and I'm working on using keyboard shortcuts, which also help speed up your editing process as well. So all in all, I think I really like this mouse and I love that it charges over USB-C and I think for if you're a video or audio editor type person, or maybe you do photo editing or illustrations in say Adobe Illustrator or something, it can be really helpful to have the equivalent of a trackpad at, at the tip of your finger instead of always having to have a separate hand on that and have it move between that and your keyboard and back and forth. Basically what I'm saying is if you're a creative or you just use any of the above applications that I've listed a lot, then this mouse is for you if you're just a general internet user, browser, person, YouTube, video, watcher. Uh, this mouse is probably not for you and you could go with something like this or even cheaper if you're not someone who uses anything that I've talked about. <laughs> but I have basically ignored this kind of mouse for the longest time because I didn't know what the hype was all about until I actually did research and I'm like, oh, I get it now. It's the scroll wheel to move through your timeline, to move through tabs and move through your workspace quickly. So I know all in all this is kind of a boring video, I'm just talking about computer mice, but it's the small things that can ultimately help you be more productive and more efficient in your workflow. So if you've made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a big thumbs up and you can see my previous video and click all the things in the end card and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye. Or you just use any of the above applications that I've listed. Oh, my light died. This area right here, but it's not wanting to focus. I have face focus after so many blurry shots in the past couple months. Um,